Good morning everybody, it's Midnight and Beyond welcoming you back to the world of Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door. In the last episode, we made it to Petalburg after going through the Petal Meadows and we were supposed to find the first crystal star here, but we very soon found out that it was taken by the Dragon Hook Tail. In order to get to his castle, we need to go through the Schwank Fortress and find the key that will allow us to get to him. So let's go ahead and do just that. But first we're gonna set a star piece, yay! That was a sentence, correct? Now, let's see, of course you just want to keep on examining every little bit of grass along the way. And here's something I kind of wanted to show off, is that you can actually first strike Paragoombas with the hammer. It actually does not uh, make it so you miss, the Paragoomba will be on the ground, and you can hit normally. This is the only time where you can hit a flying enemy with the hammer. It is with the first strike, and hey, it's a new enemy for us to examine. This is, if I could go ahead and examine it. I gotta think of something more creative to say during these segments. That's a Koopa Troopa. They've been around forever. Gotta respect the longevity. Max, uh, their shells are hard, but they flip them over and their defense drops to zero. And you know how to flip them over, right? Just jump on their heads. Doesn't even tell us how much HP or attack they have, but they are actually pretty uh, tough because they attack very, very quickly, but you don't have to worry about that when you knock them onto their shells. And I didn't get anything. Oh well. But yeah, you just go ahead and do this combo thing over and over again. You should be good to go. You know, I just realized how confusing it is that they have things called star power and star points, and they're two different things, and SP and all that jazz. Gotta come up with more creative names, Nintendo. I know this is like long before it gets even worse with like New Super Mario Bros. 2, which is the third New Super Mario Bros. game, and then New Super Mario Bros. U and Wii, and New Super Mario 3D Land World and a Half, and Knuckles featuring Dante from the Devil May Cry series. Ah, oh, whatever. Uh, the Koopa Troopas, as you can see, they are very, very quick on the field, so they are very good at getting first strikes against you. If I can avoid that, thank you. So, let's see, it's gonna just knock it down, I believe. There we go. Now, they are very difficult to guard against since they move so quickly, but thankfully, if you just get the upper hand on them, then you don't have to worry about them all that much. Uh, I'm gonna have Goombella attack the Goombas so that we don't have to worry about any damage this turn. So, like I said before, and like I keep on saying over and over, the battles in this game, it becomes very interesting just how quickly they can get done. It may seem like a chore to fight every enemy on the way, but it becomes like a fine orchestrated performance since we're on a stage and all. And it becomes a very easy thing for you to do, and it's very much worth your time because you get that experience that is going to help you later in the long run. Uh, anything else in this grass? I know that this area in particular has very important stuff in some of its trees and grass, so we already got that. Uh, what should we call it? We got a star piece earlier, and we're gonna get some things, some even better things. Oh, hey, a badge! Yeah, like I said before, enemies can sometimes have items or badges. Does not necessarily mean you will get them at the end of the battle, but it could happen sometimes. Uh, I don't think we're gonna get that one, though. Uh, if we do, I don't really care, because that's a badge. It was a close call partner badge, so if our partner is less than 5 HP, or 5 HP or less, then they will have the chance of enemies missing every now and again. It's basically pretty lucky, except not as good, because it requires you to go back down to 5 HP. And we get the badge? No, we did not. Oh well. Don't really care. There are no badges as far as I'm aware. We got another POW block right here. Like I said before, I said that I recommend you pick up a POW block at the shop before coming here. Uh, even though you get one right here, I still recommend you pick one up at the shop. Just trust your good old Uncle Midnight and you'll see why later. But yeah, um, I don't think there are any badges in the game that can only be found through enemies, so don't worry about that. It's not like Earthbound where enemies have like a 1 in 120 chance of dropping a certain item or anything like that. It's all a bit easier in that regard, so uh, I guess that's good, but what's more important is that inside this castle, we got some dudes just hanging out over there, just standing on there. Nope, it just won't open. I wonder what we should do. Oh my god! They made me give Goombella's voice actor another extra line because I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> This enemy right here, if we could examine it, is a bald cleft. I remember, I think we had bald clefts in the first Paper Mario game, we have some sort of clefts, but they were not introduced this early in the game. That's a bald cleft, basically a rock monster with a, a swarthy looking face. Uh, this is kind of mean, but bald guys really just don't do it for me. I like how she says that and yet her entire species is bald and she's like the one exception to that, it's kind of funny. Uh, max HP is 2, attack is 1, defense is 2. Yeah, this guy is rock solid. Also, come on Goombella, like, either play like dashing amazing bald men in the universe and how could they not be your thing? Ah, whatever. I just want to give a shout out to my favorite cue balls, I guess. I don't think I know. Fire doesn't even hurt it. Might as well just uh, attack it with, say, a pow block. 
I believe you could hurt it with the power smash badge. Otherwise, you won't be able to do any damage to it. Uh, I got a fire flower. Hooray. <laughs> Thanks, audience. But that's not going to be helpful to us. Instead, we're going to go ahead and use Zip Power Block. The only other way you could do damage to it is if... Ouch. Is if you use a super guard. You could, you could actually guard against the stage hazards, believe it or not. But just it's sometimes unexpected, usually. So, oh well. Get rid of those guys, however, and we can continue on through the fortress. And inside this fortress is another meadow! Oh my golly gee! Now I wanted to go ahead and hit Koopa with a hammer right now, just so I could show you that you could indeed do damage to it, but it won't be as much as if you were to jump on it. So it's still standing up, and three Koopas is actually kind of menacing. So when you think about it, even though the jump and the hammer do the same amount of damage, they both do two damage, you have to take into consideration the fact that they only do, the hammer does two damage in a single attack, but the jump uh, attack only does one HP of damage and you do two of them. So that's the differences between them, is that if you want to jump on the Koopa, it does no damage in the first attack, we only do that one damage once it's knocked over. But the hammer was able to do damage without knocking it over, but it got reduced to one due to the defense point. So you gotta keep that in mind when uh, trying to decide what attacks to use. It's not just a matter of which enemies could be hit by the jump or the hammer. Do they have spikes or do they have wings? Sometimes it's a matter of how much power do you have with each attack and how many times you want to hit the enemy. Or do you have to hit the enemy, something like that. So it becomes a lot more strategic in that regard. We're getting into some detailed fights and whatnot. Very, very interesting. What's also interesting is that all the evil Koopa Troopas decided to just uh, put on some sunshades and spike collars. That's how they uh, show off their uh, baditude and stuff. But all the other Koopas are A-OK -okay with us, apparently. Get all them corns. Get more leaves. Sorry if this is kind of annoying. I just want to make sure that I get every single little thing along the way. I promise this won't be a thing in every area. I just remember it being a very uh, important thing in this first area. So you don't have to worry about this in every chapter. Thankfully, like... The in true Mario tradition. That's another thing I like. I don't uh, I don't really want to say this right now because we'll see it as we go along. And I'm surprised I got a first strike on that. But um, the game has very a wide variety of themes, I guess we could call it. So it's not just a matter of how other Mario games are just like, oh, World 1's grass, World 2 desert, blah, 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 blah. And the original Paper Mario games sort of had that as well, like how first world was grass, second world was desert, and all that jazz. But this game is a lot more varied in that in terms of its landscapes and in terms of the stories it tells which I very, very appreciate. So I'm really excited to have this game unfold and see what it, and show you guys what it's all about. So collect all the corns, keep on going. We're already up to 66 start points. We'll be able to level up again soon, which is cool. And another POW block. Now, again, I still recommend you pick up that second one. You may not be, be entirely sure why, but it is very important. Go in here, and now we have a slightly pinker room instead of purple. And we got these things on the wall, or on the columns that I'm not going to say the obvious word. I'm going to get the first strike and hit with a hammer, and I don't know why that guy was still stuck up there. I think that was a glitch of some kind. Let's go ahead and get the first strike, guys! Ouch. Yeah, this is a bit awkward. These things are bristles. I believe this is actually the only area in the game that they appear in. I could be wrong, of course. That's a bristle, totally covered in spikes. They're so prickly. Max HP is 2, attack is 1, and defense is 4, and they're impervious to fire. Even trying to get close to en enough to whack it with a hammer is dangerous. Seriously, its spikes will totally pop out. So since you can't jump on it or use your hammer, you better use an item. The only way you could hurt them at this point in the game is through a POW block. Because Mario can't jump or use his hammer, Goombella is useless. The only thing you could do is use your good old POW block. So that's why I recommend you keep on checking the grass so you could get yourself a POW block. But even still, what is this mysterious third POW block going to be used for? Well, only time will tell, my dear friends. And 69, sort of, Mario 6 HP and Goombella's 9 HP. Uh, it's the simple pleasures in life of just finding 69s and stuff. Did I tell the story yet of how I actually didn't know what a 69 was for the longest time? Like, even throughout the phases of me yelling 69 in every single Let's Play, like, only a few months ago my friend explained to me what a 69 was, like, how it worked. I thought it worked a different way. I'm not going to explain it to you right now in case there are any children watching who don't know what it means. Don't ask your parents. Don't look it up. Just pretend like I'm just being stupid and obnoxious because I don't want to be responsible for any of this. But uh, yeah, if you want to make fun of me for that, I didn't even... I had a wrong idea as to how a 69 worked, basically. We'll just leave it at that. If you want to know exactly what I'm talking about, then uh, please send a very 
a detailed response at the following address and send Oreos along the way because Oreos are good and stuff. I don't know. Uh, let's have him super guard. Yeah, see, I don't need any stinking regular guard. I'm a pro. It was just maybe a bit just a little bit rusty on the way when we first started, but now nah, I'm back into the old swing of things, and the tree's about to fall down. Pew! I believe using the hammer makes it more likely for uh, stage hazards to fall, so you can use that to your advantage if you want to. Get rid of him. Inside this block, we have another fire flower. I think we actually have full inventory, so I'll use this opportunity to use a fire flower. I don't know if fire works on the Koopas. I guess we'll find out in just a second. Uh, though a better idea would be to just knock him on, knock him, blah, 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 knock him on his shell, and then go ahead and switch to the fire flower. And you can see in the background how the fortress in the back has always changed colors depending on what area we're in. There's just so much detail that didn't really need to be done, but it shows uh, the progress you're making. I really appreciate it. So that's very cool. What is very cool is them getting their butts burned. But I don't really care. We got seven star points and we're good to go. And we got another fire flower, equivalent exchange or something like that. Uh, this thing over here, this is an in coupon. I didn't think we had enough uh, room for it. It lets you stay at the inn for free, so I guess we'll take it if we have room for it. Uh, open this up, we got nothing. Yeah, open up the grass. Don't have anything in here or in here. And we are at the end of this area, yet we have not been given a free POW block. Oh no, so scary! Uh, thankfully we have one uh, that we brought from the shop, so we'll be good to go in that regard. And you can see there's a heal block. Now, I'm sorry I keep on saying this, but in the original Paper Mario game, heal blocks were absolutely free, but in this game they cost money. So that's kind of unfortunate. But whenever they give us a heal block, and immediately followed it up with a save block. You know what that means? Something terrible is about to happen. Yeah, we're in for a pretty epic fight right about now. You thought those enemies before were tough? You ain't seen nothing yet. <laughs> You're the first contestants I've seen in a while. If you've come all the way here to Schwonk Fortress, you must want stone keys. And if that's the case, then you must compete against me. If you win, I'll let you through to where the stone keys rest. However, if you lose, you will suffer a terrible, terrible fate. And by terrible, I mean awful. <laughs> so what do you want to do? I'll take you on like a Pokemon. <laughs> You're in for it now. Oh my god, it's even worse than a mini boss fight. It's a quiz show of doom! Hey, hey, ladies and germs. Welcome everybody to the 65th Super Fun Quirk Quiz. Now, if you remember in the original Paper Mario game, uh, there was a quiz show in that one as well. It was called the 64th Annual Trivia Quiz Show. And this actually continues the trend of that. Instead of 64th, it's the 65th. So it's not just a random number. It's actually like continuing the continuity. So it's really stinking funny. Perk up those ears. If you correctly answer five of you, the following questions, you win. But get three of them wrong and you'll suffer a cruel and unusual punishment. Now for the first question. What's hidden in this place? Stone keys, crystal star, princess peach, the pickle stone. So these are pretty easy questions. All you gotta do is answer five of them correctly, get through. Or if you get three of them wrong, then you have to fight an optional boss. I'm actually gonna go ahead and fight the optional boss on purpose because it is very easy to do if you have a POW block with you. If you don't have a POW block with you, however, it's actually impossible to win. So I recommend not doing that. So since we are prepared, however, I'm gonna lose this on purpose. So we're gonna say Pickle Stone. Is that your real answer? Are you sure? <laughs> run, 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 you fools. Remember, if you get three wrong, you're going to suffer like you wouldn't believe. <laughs> Don't let the pressure get to you. On to your question two. What do one Mr. Solvender and one Fire Flower cost at the shop in Petalburg? Total! Uh, I actually don't know this. Uh, it'd be really funny if I got the correct answer by accident. I'll say 12 coins. Is that your real answer? Are you sure? It is not 12 coins. I just went with 12 because it was like midnight and beyond. 12, midnight. You blithering meathead, you're on again. Get one more on and something wonderfully awful happens to you. 
I like how his little laugh works just like a Muppet character. Just one more on. What's that I hear? Your little knees knocking? Mario does have little knees in this game. Moving on, question three. What is the name of the mayor in Petalburg? Couscous, Bertle, Moopa, and Croup. His name is Croup. Now, even though I want to lose on purpose, I still want to see what all the questions are because they have funny responses. So, I'll just go ahead and get some of them correct right now so we can see all the questions. His name is Croup. I want to say Couscous, but unfortunately I can't say any more wrong ones. Yes, we're sure. Oh, that's correct! That question was too easy, but it only gets harder from here. Much harder! So prepare yourself. I like his little bow tie. <laughs> you are not done yet, folks. Question four. Wait, so how is like... The Thwomp's supposed to be the Steve Harvey of this universe, and then the Shy Guys from before are... Uh... John O'Hurley or something like that. Is that how this works? I don't think I know. Tell me now, where is the Crystal Star? Rogueport, Hopedale Castle, Mushville, Petalburg. I don't think Mushville is even a real place in any point in Mario Paper Mario history, so I'm gonna say Hopedale Castle. Oh, that's correct! That question was too easy, but it only gets harder from here. Much harder! So prepare yourself. Are you ready for the diabolical question five? I just realized that Chuck Quizmo isn't in this game now. I'm sad. How can we get to, from Petal Meadows to Rogueport? Boat across the sea, only by air. Go through a pipe, race in a car. Well, we got through a pipe to get here, so it's uh, go through a pipe. That your answer? Yes, it is. And we're right! Oh, that's correct! That question was too easy, but it only gets harder from here. Much harder. This isn't even my final form. On to question six. Which of the following creatures have hands? Koopa Troopas, Goombas, Clefs, Fuzzies. Uh, obviously it's Koopa Troopa. Ah, I need to write again. Tell me you didn't just get your fourth right answer. It can't be true. That's it. I'm making the rest of these near impossible. Get ready for brain pain. Now for the last question. What number question is this? Question six, question seven, question eight, super question 64. Not only is that just like the funniest stinking answer ever, it says seven right stinking up there. So it basically just sort of gives it to you. If you get to this point, you're basically trying to lose on purpose, and that's indeed what I am trying to do. So I'm just gonna go ahead and give the best answer ever. Super question 64. Is that your real answer? Are you sure? What happens? Actually, I've never said no before. What if I say no? The choose again. <laughs> All right, say 64. Is that your real answer? Are you sure? Run, run, run! So run, it hurts. That's three runs, how awful for you. <laughs> Time for the pain game! I'll be nice, beat these guys and I'll let you pass, but you can't possibly do it! Best of luck, fathead! <laughs> oh, that's not very nice. Oh, wow, wow, wow. Now I like this guy significantly less because he actually sent a mean insult. Oh god, they have a singing power thirst or whatever it's called, a tasty tonic or whatever. Uh, these guys, I don't know if they actually appear in the game otherwise. I think this is the only point where you could fight them aside from a certain other area we'll get into later. This is just the regular cleft. That's a cleft, a rock head jerk with spikes on his noggin. What a rocker. Max HP is two, attack is two, and defense is two. That hard head is a major pain. Fire doesn't hurt it, but other types of items are pretty effective, usually. If nothing seems to work on it, you could always just run- Oh, the description tells me where we find this thing. Interesting. Okay. So you do find these guys in the next chapter, but like I said, you cannot beat clefts unless you use the POW block. And the game only gives you two of them for free on the way up here, so... If you want to do this boss fight, you have to either buy that third POW block uh, from the shop before coming out here, or you could just super guard against all their attacks and then kill them that way. Otherwise, it is impossible to win this fight. Thankfully, I came prepared, and I can go ahead and get some easy free experience. Ex experience! Uh, geez, way to ruin the moment. And that falls over. And if you're wondering what that power thirst thing, I don't think we've seen that before. That actually uh, doubles their attack power, so it would have been really stinking deadly if we uh, got hit with one of those. But thankfully, we don't have to worry about that, because we just got a level up! And like I said before, we're going to go from here on out, upgrading HP, then FP, then BP. Mm 
What? It can't be! How did you defeat my cute little clefs? Ah! Fine, whatever, you could pass, but I despise you. <laughs> and then he just goes to sleep. We have survived the trivia quiz show of doom, and we have gotten through the entirety of Schwank Fortress. Next time on Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door, we are going to go into the Thwomp secret hole in search of the stone keys. This is Midnight and Beyond, and I will see you all later. Good night.